Cornerstone recognizes that migrations to the cloud are challenging. Uh, Nodes migrations particularly to exchange online. So the objective of this discussion in this video is to show how we accomplish a successful migration to the cloud from Notes to Office 365. Uh, with that particular objective in mind, migrate Notes to Exchange Online. Every objective has a number of challenges. And what are those challenges in, in our migrations? Right, the first one we deal with is making sure mail flow is handled appropriately during the migration stage. Mail has to get to the right place. Uh, the second challenge that we have is ensuring that the user experience is both consistent and meets the expectations of the users. Third challenge is making sure that data is reliable, data integrity. Summarize, soon as mail does not get to where it needs to go, the customer no longer trusts the environment. They don't trust the environment, they don't trust the migration, they don't trust the migration, we cannot have a successful migration. Right? If their experience is going to be different from one environment to another, uh, take away the, the new application going from Notes, iNotes, or, uh, or the Notes, Lotus Notes application over to Outlook, take that away for a second. The experience of the user being able to interact with one another, see each other's calendars, that has to be consistent. Right? And the third challenge is making sure that the data that I saw before I left my old system to the data into the new system is going to be what I expected. Otherwise, if anything is missing, I've got a challenge and a problem. So I want to introduce Alex Levin, who's our senior architect for Notes Migrations, particularly with Quest Notes Migrations from Notes over to Exchange, Exchange to Exchange, and other email systems over to Exchange to show how our design addresses those challenges. Alex? Thank you, Eugene. <coughs> so uh, today we're here to show you uh, how we can uh, have a, a pleasant experience, a, a consistent experience for our users when we do a migration. And uh, I'm going to draw a couple of icons here to lay the groundwork for how we can meet these three uh, objectives. So over here, we're going to draw our notes environment. And we're going to call this company, let's say this is company abc.com. We're going to migrate. And our objective is to get to Office 365. With every notes environment, uh, in, in many notes environments, we usually see already an Active Directory environment uh, stage and being used by uh, the users for the uh, workstation logins and for uh, other authentication, other services within the environment. Certainly, if that doesn't exist for a notes migration, uh, to make it all work, we do have, we would then have to set up a new Greenfield Active Directory environment. So, uh, let's pretend our abc.com company, like most of our clients, already have uh, an Active Directory environment here. So we're going to call this abc.com as well. Okay. So the tools we have available to us for a successful migration to Office 365 uh, are two tools for notes. There's a notes migrator for exchange, and there's a coexistence manager uh, uh, for notes. And uh, the coexistence has, well, it does exactly what it's supposed to, it says. It provides a coexistence environment. Mm -hmm. It's what helps really make the magic happen for a seamless, as we're migrating users for coexistence to occur. Uh, the problem and the challenges with this is that there's many moving parts to it, which we'll explain in a little bit. The other part there is how do we get the information to stay there? How do we get user accounts uh, created and group accounts mm -hmm. into that environment and prepped and ready to go so that when the first user is migrated, they are in an environment that is very familiar to them. They can, for instance, when they're ready to email somebody, they look in the global address list. 
it should already be populated with all the users that they know of in their business, all the groups, and everything else they need to do to stay productive for their business, right? So to make this happen, uh, the notes migrator for Exchange is implemented in the environment, and we're going to call that NME. And the other tool, we're just going to call it CMN, which is called Business Manager for Notes. And it said there's three parts, so I'm going to draw three parts to it here. Number one, we'll call that CMN1. And we're going to have, I don't want to put for, for e six two and three really kind of lean, uh, belong together, and we'll sort of explain that in a moment here. Uh, we'll put this CMN2 and 3. Okay. So, in the first part, in getting user and group accounts over to the environment, we use the notes migrator tools <clears throat> to extract the information from notes into a local database for, for the NME. This information can be reviewed and looked upon for uh, uh, matching and for, for any modifications that you need to do to get the information over. Okay. That's step one. Number one is extraction. Number two is a review of the information. And number three is ingestion or a copy of that information converted into Active Directory. That's step number three. The other tool we use to help finish that off is we use the CMN uh, coexistence manager for, for number one. It's a uh, Active Directory synchronization between nodes and IAD, if you will. We set up connectors, a two-way connector between nodes and the CMN here. And we set up a two-way connector this way. The importance of this, what this coexistence does, is that you know during the coexistence migration, you're going to be, it's, it's natural to be onboarding staff and, and people are going to be moving and changing departments or whatnot. The changes that you make in the groups and the security and the, uh, that they have, you want that to exist seamlessly. Mm. So th these are the utilities, and that's how that actually happens in staging the Active Directory environment. Mm. The third missing piece to all of this is there is, Microsoft has a part called the Microsoft Directory Synchronization. And that's installed, and its, and its purpose is to maintain the consistency between the on-premise Active Directory environment and Office 365. So with these tools combined here, the, the, the notes migrator for Exchange, or the, note, uh, the uh, notes tools from Dell, and the MS Directory Sync, together, the synchronizations occur to eventually get what you want for your users and groups and all your, all your, all your objects to stay consistent. So I think I understand, Alex, thank you for, so if I understand correctly, the accounts that exist, or mailboxes and groups that exist in notes, or in some cases, the, not just the accounts, but the groups like departments, uh, for example, they can only exist in notes in some cases. We find this, right, with our customers. Mm -hmm. They exist only in notes, but don't necessarily match up in Active Directory because they have no purpose. There may be a corresponding group, mm -hmm. like a, an HR department, but the membership of those groups may be completely out of sync. So the NME ensures that the objects, user objects, and or groups are always synchronized with one another so the memberships are in match, mm -hmm. so that when these objects then become user and group objects within Office 365, who I see in Office 365 when I get converted there is who I saw when I was over in Notes. That's absolutely right. And if right. there's changes, then the memberships here, or maybe even first name or last name values, mm -hmm. those are synchronized to Active Directory. I see that in Office 365, allowing me to have a consistent experience when I was in Notes. Um, and when I get moved to Office 365, and also affects mail flow, right? Correct. Okay. Exactly. So, uh, so that's a great lead into to the second part is is how to deal with mail flow. The importance of setting up the environment like this with your users and groups is that when from the day one, uh, I'm going to create two users here. We're going to call them uh, Sally, Sally and Bob. Okay. So let's say on migration day, when we when we when we migrate Sally, we go through a migration process, and we we use our, our tools over here to mi migrate Sally into the cloud. And when we do that, when she uh, emails, she will have when she gets up there a fully working gal that you can see. And when she emails anybody, this sort of brings us into what CMN number two and three do to make this to finalize this coexistence. Mm -hmm. When Sally um, wants to email Bob, who has not been migrated yet, 
Sally will see Bob and the gal. But what happens is when she sends Bob an email, Bob hasn't been migrated yet, and the tools are set up to redirect the mail flow internally through the CMN uh, uh, environment, which is actually really just a smart host mm. for the environment. Okay. Now, the really cool thing about this setup and why this is important is that one of the key features that the CMN has is that, as you know, Notes and Microsoft technologies are two totally different mm -hmm. technologies, right? And in Notes environments, there's these, uh, in emails, these active mail mm -hmm. objects. Mm -hmm. And active mail objects are a bunch of, uh, a set of embedded objects, buttons, and, and tables that an Outlook client just doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. Well, this CMN connector, the two and three here for the mail flow, it actually is able to, it acts as a translator mm. between the two environments. It can interpret and correctly uh, uh, give the user the experience that they need to do to stay productive mm. between those that are migrated and not migrated. So CMN, so with NME, we've populated all the user groups. Now we know where to redirect messages. With CMN, we now have the ability to ensure that what Sally sees here and what she sends over to Bob Bob sees in his world via notes, and he may see the attachments and the embedded items a certain way within notes, but that email is converted using CMN in both directions so that it's presented in an exchange environment as close to as possible to what they saw over in notes, thereby preserving the user experience. Correct. Not only ensuring mail flow gets to the right place, right. but also preserving the user experience. And in some sense, also dealing with data integrity. Right? What I saw here in notes is also what I see there in Office 365, but that's just making sure each individual object is there. How do we deal with the migration side of it? Because I've got a user here that's got 10,000 items in their inbox. Right. If we migrate them, cut them off on Friday, and then on Monday they're supposed to be online in Office 365, 100 of the users are here, 800 are still over in notes. That 100, how do we make sure that 100 has the message that they're supposed to have that's been committed to them? What are some tactics we use to ensure that they have the messages they need without overwhelming the migration flow? That's a great question, Eugene. So uh, one, of the, one of the features of, of the, uh, the migration tools from uh, Notes Migration for Change and, and this is that the, uh, when we, on the day of migration for a user, we can limit the amount of mail items mm. that we actually migrate over to it. We can, if, 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 if uh, we do numerous tests and we determine that you know, we need to migrate 100 users in in mm -hmm. uh, in one night, we may have to decide that you know what. And during the initial migration, we're only going to migrate the last sixty days worth of email, mm -hmm. and we can set the scope to that. We can, uh, to some degree, we can modify what files and folders we we can move. Mm -hmm. For instance, we don't have to migrate the trash. We can sure. exclude the trash. Why migrate? Or even set items, right? Or, or delete the items. items. Exactly. Yeah. So there are certain folders that we can exclude. Mm -hmm. And on all of those folders, we can limit, we can scope to a set amount of days if we need to. So if we need to do a massive migration of 500 users or 1,000, we can really ramp it up in one night and say, you know what? On the first patch, everybody mm -hmm. will get their last 30 days worth of email. And then on a, on a, on a, a later date, uh, on a day or two later, you could, after the initial uh, mail item migration, the mailbox migration, you can then move the other items over into the mailbox, but that's not it. You can also, if there's other features you can take advantage. If you wanted to, you could extract that information into PST files. Mm -hmm. So if it was the ob objective of a business that, hey, you know what, after 30 days, we want to keep that really clean and lean. Push it to an archive. We can put it to right? an archive. So we can exactly. take anything that's more than 30 days here, we immediately leverage the archive available over in Office 365, keeping their mailbox clean, which means their OSD file is small, which means their synchronization is short. So I get, I get your point that NME and CMN, we've got all kinds of, I mean, we're doing this for customers in different ways depending upon what they need. The beauty is we've got some flexibility to decide how much do we do, how do we do it, when do we do it, because each customer is going to be so different. Exactly. Right? And that's where the expertise that, uh, that the team has comes into play. So we want to thank you uh, for just getting a chance to see how uh, we're able to design a Quest uh, Notes to Migration or Notes to Exchange Online Migration. At the end of the day, we want to make sure it's successful, that the user experience is consistent, mail is getting to the right location, and the data integrity uh, is in place. So thank you for watching the video. Thank you.